Part 2, Othello by William Shakespeare, Story Summary. So, Act 3, Scene 1, there are musical notes in the corner of the panel. Cassio is busy speaking to the clown. He is a servant of Othello, and he's basically hired musicians in order to play for Othello outside his window, um, part of a customary uh, cultural thing of, you know, uh, music waking up the, the newlyweds. But it seems like Othello has actually given uh, money to the clown to give to whoever's making the, the noise um, as Othello sees it to basically pay them to stop playing. Um, so Cassio then tells the, the musicians to stop. The clown then disappears somewhere else. And Iago comes out and says to Cassio, you know what, don't worry about it. Speak to Desdemona, get her to plead on your behalf, um, you know, chin up, head up, we can get through this, you'll be reinstated, but don't speak to Othello, um, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. rather go through Desdemona so she can, she can speak on your behalf. Uh, then he goes off and Cassio says, all right, well, can you send your wife that I can speak to her and then, you know, eventually get to speak to Desdemona. So Emilia comes out because, yes, she's Iago's wife, but Othello also tasked Iago to ask his wife to uh, look after Desdemona, especially on the, the ship. So kind of like a, a lady-in-waiting um, you know, somebody who helps her get ready, you know, sees to her needs, attends to her, etc. And Cassio tells his whole story, and this is terrible, and please, you need to speak to Desdemona, and we need to get this sorted out. I feel terrible for what I've done. It wasn't right. It wasn't good. But I, I can't not serve Othello. You know, he, he feels like it, it would... It would take away part of his life. And Emilia's like, yes, no, sure. And I'll speak with her for you. And we'll we'll get this sorted out. Uh, Act 3, scene 2. Very short scene. But Othello gives letters to Iago and says, please, you know, um, I know you standing in place of, of Cassio. But here are some letters. Go give them to different people, um, also to Montano, the governor, and then he turns around to the other men standing with him and says, right, let's go see the fortifications. So Othello is still doing his job, he's still working. He's been sent to Cyprus, he's checking on the fortifications, he wants to look at the defences. Just because the Turkish fleet got shipwrecked, you know, just because his wife is there, like he said to the Duke, don't think I'm going to give up my my duty my service to you that comes first it's just a bonus that i've got my wife with me and also keep in mind desdemona is the one who asked the duke to be with othello to travel with him to be with him um because basically i married him to be with him and now i'm going to sit at home and you know it's it's not going to be good for my father to keep seeing me and keep you know being reminded of, of what has happened, and they were like, sure, go with him. So, Act 3, Scene 3, I have done in three parts. It is the climax. It is where the seeds of doubt are sown. It's where all the players are set up, and Iago is now in full swing. This This is it. And it, he's made or, or broken on, on this part. This is do or die, okay? Excuse the pun because of the obvious tragic ending. So in the top for part one, I've also included the lines. So from lines one to 90. So it's Desdemona speaking with Emilia and Cassio. And please keep in mind, Emilia is always there. There is never a point in time where Cassio and Desdemona are speaking alone. Okay, very important. 
and Cassio pleads his case and Desdemona says, yes, I, I will ask him, I won't let him rest, I will speak with Othello, I will nag him, I will bring it into every part of conversation and it's either at this section or later where she basically says, like, on my life and that indeed is, is a sad irony because it is on her life that Cassio basically takes Othello's place um, as governor of Cyprus. So Othello and Iago are then approaching the house. Cassio, thinking of what Iago said to him, says, listen, I'm not going to wait around here for Othello. Um, you just speak on my behalf. It's, it's better that I'm not here. And Iago makes a, a comment about this to Othello. Othello then asks him to elaborate what exactly is going on here. What do you mean by it? And Iago says, no, no, it's, it's nothing. It's just a bit strange. Um, you know, why, why is he here? I thought he wanted to speak with you. And then in the bottom part of, of that part one, uh, Emilia is there with... Desdemona and Othello and Othello greets her and Desdemona is like please you need to speak with Cassio it's very necessary like the man is is struggling he he wants to be with you you know yes I get that you had to make an example of him but surely if he's that kind of friend to you and he means that much and his position that is that great then couldn't you have done it privately as well? What about his dignity? And Othello's like, fine, fine, I'll speak to the man, okay? Yes, you know, quit the nagging. Um, and if it will make you feel better, I'll do it. Then part two, lines 91 to 263, is Iago planting the seeds of doubt. You know, Cassio and... You know, I hope Desdemona's honest, but why would he be there and not speak with you? And I drew in an eye because of the jealousy, you know. Um, it's a wonderful thing not to be a jealous person. And Othello's questioning him because it does seem quite random, but he believes that Iago wouldn't say something if they you know, wasn't a, a deeper purpose or motivation behind it. And Iago gives off this feeling or atmosphere of, I'm only telling you this because I'm concerned. I'm telling you this because I care for you and I could be wrong. But, you know, if, if I'm not wrong and nothing gets done about it, you know, wouldn't that be worse? And he speaks about... Uh, Desdemona not choosing anybody from Venice and Othello says no but she chose me like I don't see how that's a point because yes she did look at everybody else like I get that I'm older I get that I'm different but she chose me and then Iago says but she deceived her father if she's capable of deceiving her father, then what makes you think that she won't deceive you? And it's at this point when Othello, through his insecurities, um, not thinking that perhaps he's good enough for Desdemona, considers the fact that she might be looking elsewhere. And, you know, she has already you know, shown, shown signs of deceit and not um, speaking to her father and hiding it from her. And basically this, this is where the seeds of doubt are sown. Then we've got part three, bottom left-hand corner, lines 264 to the end of the scene. Again, quite a lot going on. Um, Emilia and Desdemona are speaking. Othello walks in still troubled by what Iago has said and Desdemona takes the handkerchief and wipes his brow and I'm sorry that you're ill and how can I help you and as the two of them go off for dinner 
She forgets about the handkerchief and Amelia picks it up. And she then goes to her husband Iago and says, listen, I have something for you. And he doesn't really seem to want to give her the time of day, not really interested. And she says, you know, you kept asking me about this handkerchief and now I've got it. But she's hesitant. Uh, he really, really wants it from her. He won't tell her why he wants it. And the little thought bubble there is because he's planning on leaving it in Cassio's rooms. Um, again, to give some kind of hard evidence because that's what Othello is seeking. Um, you know, you can't just tell me my wife is unf unfaithful. I need to see some kind of proof for this. And... In a sense, Emilia wants to get back into her husband's good books. She, she wants him to be happy with her again. She wants the relationship again. Um, but she's also loyal to Desdemona. But she does indeed uh, give over the handkerchief. A little bit later on, Iago and Othello are speaking. And Othello again, you know, says, I need proof. And just the idea that his wife might be unfaithful, he actually turns on Iago and grabs him and says, if this isn't true, if you're making this up, then you're going to wish you had never been born and this is going to be terrible for you and you will face my wrath. And Iago's like, oh no, then I just should not have said anything because this is what love and honesty and loyalty get you, you know, throttled by the throat. And he's like, it's, it's Cassio, and he's the problem, and I've seen him with the handkerchief, and why would he have it, you know, if you gave it to your wife? And then Othello pledges himself to Iago and says, um, I'm now formally making you and officially making you my lieutenant, and I thank you for what you've done for me and opening my eyes. And he vows to, to be with him. And Iago also vows to him. And basically they are now partners in crime. Which again, excuse the pun, is something that's going to happen later on. So, Act 3, Scene 4. Again, I've tried to divide it up into three little mini parts um, within the scene. And... Emilia and Desdemona are speaking. Desdemona asks the clown, please go and find where Cassio stays. I want to speak with him. A uh, bit of comic relief. Um, generally, this is what uh, William Shakespeare does. He includes some sort of comical uh, scene or banter or exchange of words between characters just to drop the emotions, allow emotions to settle so that it doesn't reach a breaking point because it has been quite tense. This has just come from a, a climactic scene. Everything has now been set up. People are wondering what's going to happen. How can this work? You know, doesn't Othello question this? Why doesn't Desdemona say anything? So there's this comedic relief. And then she and Emilia speaks about, um, speak about the handkerchief. And she's like, I would rather lose money than this handkerchief. Like, I just, like, I can't not have the handkerchief. And Emilia's like, well, I don't know where it is. Like, where did you lose it? So obviously she's lying herself. And Othello comes in the room and um, they're holding hands and you know, where, where is the handkerchief, and she says, but I don't have it, and he's like, did you lose it, and I never said that, and this whole argument carries on, and he storms off, and Emilia's like, oh, okay, so you say Othello doesn't get jealous, because that, that definitely looked like jealousy to me, but anyway, then the next little scene, we've, um, Part of that is Emilia, Desdemona and Cassio. Cassio again pleading. Iago comes in, speaks with them and Desdemona says, I don't know why Othello is so upset. And Iago is like, oh, okay, I'll go check with him. Meanwhile, he knows exactly what it's about. 
and Desdemona and Emilia are speaking again and a little bit later on in the scene Bianca uh, comes up to Cassio so she is a lover of his although she affirms that she's not a prostitute but um, it definitely seems to be a very loose relationship and Cassio is like, hey, listen, I found this handkerchief. I really like it. You know, can't you make a copy of it? Um, this isn't mine. And Bianca's like, what do you mean it isn't yours? And why are you asking me to make a copy of another woman's handiwork? And what are you playing at? And she keeps wanting to walk with him and talk with him. And he's like, no, really, like, I can't be seen with you. Like, I've got work to do. Oh, no, but it's fine. I'll just walk with you. No, no, no. Like, you, you don't want to walk with me. And basically, he doesn't want to be seen with her. Um, so that brings a lot of questions into it. And that is the second panel. It's already at 16 minutes. So I'm going to stop there and then do part three.